Item number SCP-7616, Object Class, Safe Drug. Item is considered neutralized or decommissioned, but ongoing anomalous phenomena originates from them. Special Containment Procedures SCP-7616 and SCP-7616 number are to be contained in Site-88. SCP-7616 is to be investigated for anomalous properties and its human level monitored for spikes in activity. Reconstruction of SCP-7616 is currently underway, so as to obtain a better understanding of its nature. Description SCP-7616 is a heavily damaged American steamboat commissioned by one Adrian. Note, no last name given. In 1921, the object was used for commercial river cruises along the Mississippi River and as a cover for illegal activities such as gambling and moonshine production slash distribution. The many relevant objects found within the vessel are referred to as SCP-7616 number and include decks of standard playing cards, dice, roulette tables, slot machines, and eight deceased humans. SCP-7616 number gaming equipment only manifest anomalous properties within SCP-7616. Any players who participate in a game of chance have a 100% success rate. When SCP-7616-1 or Adrian's Corpse is treated as a player of a game within SCP-7616, SCP-7616-1 loses 100% of games in all tests. All results of chance-based elements of any game played within SCP-7616 are decided in the player's favor. Should the odds of a win condition be impossible, the circumstances of that game will shift to allow a player win. Skill-based factors of games played within SCP-7616 are unaffected, as well as games where the opponent is another player, excluding the house. The internal Hume level of SCP-7616 is exceedingly high, ranking at 700 B percent and the presently known anomalous properties do not account for its Hume levels. SCP-7616 number objects have been proven to be non-anomalous, and SCP-7616 merely reacts to games of chance being played within it. SCP-7616 number corpses are thought to be non-anomalous and may have been buried, save for SCP-7616-1. Addendums SCP-7616 was found in the bottom of the Mississippi River, near Port Sofa. Its destruction thought to have been caused by an explosion to its engine. Civilians aboard SCP-7616 at the time of its malfunction have been safely evacuated, the only casualties appearing to be Adrian and seven confirmed members of the New Orleans crime family. If you told me I was going to hell, I'd believe you. I wasn't always a bad egg, but I've always enjoyed being out on the Mississippi River. I don't know if it's a natural orchestra of babbling water, or just a calm feeling of being carried down the river. But give me just a bit of hemp, or a bit too much gin, and I could steer at the river for hours. I grew up an orphan in Vicksburg. From what little I was told, my mom was Chinese, and my dad was white. I was an unexpected child, I guess. I wasn't white enough for my dad to want me, and not Chinese enough for my mom either. So they dropped me off at the orphanage and freaked off. Maybe I should feel more torn up about that, but... Well, screw them. If they didn't want me, then I don't want them either. I left the orphanage when I was 14, decided I wanted to see more of the world. So I tried to sneak my way into fishing boats, but they kicked me off every time. Someone said it was bad luck for girls to be on the waters, but I know that's bunk. When I started dressing like a boy and going by Adrian instead of Annabelle, that same geezer led me on, and I've been just fine. Didn't have a problem with the free labor either, till he realized I was the same person. Guess I have to thank him though. I ended up learning a lot about boats, steering, 
engine repairs, that sort of thing. Pretending to be a guy ended up fitting me better than being a girl, even if neither fit me right. But hold a gun to my head and force me into one or the other, and I guess I'll be a man. Even if I got a baby face. Around the time I hit 15, I got fed up with the place I was staying at, so I made it seem like I was going north, made my own boat, and went down to New Orleans. Don't know if it was a blessing or a curse that I was adopted by the Matonga family. Not in a sense that they gave me a home, though I guess they did by extension. They paid me. They gave me a pretty straightforward bartending job. It started out pretty innocent, pouring drinks, spilling friendly gossip, cleaning glasses, etc. Plus, half the clock, the drinks are free. I got the idea to start doing card tricks for extra tips, and I guess the locals took notice, plus I got promoted to card dealer slash bartender. The family eventually trusted me enough to handle more private gigs. Private means rich. Rich means more tips at the bar. So I've been a dope to pass that up. I have a good thing going. And as much as I love to say that prohibition pushed me into the life I live now, I know that ain't true. I wanted to be somebody that family could trust. And more importantly, somebody that family could pay. I made a dream of going back to the river on a boat of my own. So I started educating myself proper for it. Learned what I needed to do to make it a reality. But in reality, dreams cost money. Guess, in a way, I've already sold my soul to the family. I pitched my idea to them, and as orchestra. A river cruise boat, a few poker tables, fine dining, a full liquor bar. And with Mardi Gras, the top deck be the perfect place to sling beads at the revelers on the docks. I admittedly gave it my old name. But the family didn't need to know that. Besides, I'd be the captain. All they needed to know was that it's profitable, and I needed the money. About 30 to 40k for the whole deal. They said something like, well, give it some thought. Probably blew it off at first, till prohibition came. When the demand came for bootlegging, my boss got the idea to go full casino and hide a whole distillery in the engine room. Suddenly, they were all over my idea. A discreet location that not just makes its own product, but ships it out? I gotta admit, it was genius. They gave me an offer, a 25k loan for just the boat itself. No furnishings, they handled that. All I needed to do was give them permission to do the aforementioned gambling and bootlegging on my ship. They'd paid me a salary as their captain, and I paid off a bid at the end of every week. At this point, why not? I already wanted a bar and a poker table. If they wanted all the bells and whistles, I wasn't going to turn them down. They brought the boat in my name, and with me at the helm, things are going great for the first few weeks. My payments outpaced their interests. Ever since I stopped having to pay rent, sleeping in the captain's closet freed up a lot more of my money and put me in a better position to supervise the gambling hall. I helped myself to buying some of the product and being way thin and just 4 foot 11 inches on a generous day. It didn't take much to send me over the deep end even with my tolerance. I got talked into playing some card games and found out I got a bit of talent for the games. Got a mean lucky streak going until the end. Ended up breaking even that night. I got unlucky, but I knew I could make it all back. So I came in the next day, and then the next, and the next. The casino was my home. I won some, I lost some, and tied often. I felt so, so close. I knew I can get it. It's only until I spent a couple thirds of my paycheck that I realized the reality of the situation. I'm missing my weekly payment, and the interest is starting to catch up with me. I'll be back to where I was at this rate, and I'm only getting by on the family's forgiveness and understanding. I needed something, but something followed me. I found a letter addressed to me on my pillow, stamped with a wax seal, fine parchment too. I thought it might have been from the family, but it ended up being some kind of ad. A single postcard with a boilerplate message on its back. 
with a few blanks so whoever wrote it could fill in key details. Prim and proper legal services. PBLS 445 Ash Axis, Sweet Coast City, 7th Ring of Hell. Dear Adrian, we would like to extend an offer for us to settle your debt with the New Orleans crime family for a price that you can afford to give at any moment you so choose. In addition, I offer the promise of a comfortable life for the rest of your days upon payment. Please, turn the card over for instructions on how to summon me in person. Serious increase only. This offer is for you and you alone. I hope to hear from you, Primrose Pratish. Turn the card over for instructions. At the time, I didn't think much of the request. I thought someone was playing a joke on me, until I realized that this flat postcard had more than two sides. Several, in fact. Each time I flipped it, it showed me a completely different side until it looked back to the front again. I've been pulling over this thing for about an hour now. Either I'm going insane, or it's honest to God magic, hell magic, if the return address is to be believed. I didn't know whether I should go to church or just bail, but I realized something. This is a devil's deal, a genuine bargain for my soul. If the priests are right, I'm probably going to hell anyway, right? The gambling, the drinking, my identity, if this primrose character has the potential to turn my life around, then she's right. This is a price I can afford.